Hello fellow nerds Today I thought I'd take you along as I prepare the next session of my Curse of Strahd campaign and if you are going to play this module and don't want any spoilers I suggest you turn off this video because there are going to be major spoilers pretty much from the get-go so you have been warned as my players have entered Valaki finally I need to read up on some of the NPCs they could encounter in the city and even though I like to tweak the module a bit I am going to read up the original NPC descriptions from the campaign book Let's begin with someone called Isaac Strazny. Isaac and his sister were born in Valaki. One morning their father and their uncle took them fishing on Lake Tsarovich. On the way back to town, a dire wolf attacked Isaac and bit off his right arm. His father carried Isaac back to town while his uncle distracted the beast. His sister ran and hid in the woods and was never seen again. Unlike his sister, Isaac was born without a soul. As time wore on, he forgot his lost sister and learned to cope with his disability. Now let me just comment on this. Getting lost in the woods of Barovia and never being seen again is nothing special. The woods are terrible. They are supposed to be terrible. They are infested with wolves and zombie wolves and whatever dangerous creature you want to put in there. You are not supposed to stray from the path. As for the part with being born without a soul, um, this is an integral part of the world building in Barovia. Some people just don't have a soul. They are soulless. And This has something to do with Barovia being a sort of pocket dimension, if I remember correctly, which also affects uh, player character death. If a player character dies, their soul can't ascend to wherever souls in D&D &D ascend to. Unfortunately, that means they are coming back as a sort of um, undead zombie vampire hybrid, depending on which way you want to go with this as a DM. Um, I think there was a level cap. This can only happen either until level 3 or 5 or starting at level 3 or 5. I really need to read up on this again. Anyway, um, being soulless is also um, a natural occurrence in this cursed land. Now, moving on with Isaac's description. Isaac's parents succumbed to their grief, leaving him an orphan. He became a sociopath. 
other children ruthlessly mocked him because of his dead family and his missing arm. But he was a large boy and had no trouble killing them and disposing of their bodies. He was eventually caught in the act and brought to the burgomaster. Instead of punishing the boy for his crimes, Baron Valakovich pardoned Isaac and took him into his home. Isaac has been loyal to the burgomaster ever since, enjoying the power of his position and the comforts of his master's mansion. When he isn't enforcing the burgomaster's will, Isaac drinks copious amounts of wine. Fiendish gift After years of doing Baron Valakovich's dirty work, Isaac awakened from a drunken stupor one morning to find that he had grown a new arm to replace the one he had lost. The new appendage has barbed spines, elongated fingers and long nails. He can create fire with a snap of his fiendish fingers and has used the flames to put the fear of the devil in every Valachian. Doll Collector And this is where it gets a bit creepy. Perhaps more disturbing than his fiendish arm and his murderous nature is Isaac's collection of dolls, which he keeps in his bedroom in the Burgomaster's mansion. Isaac often has dreams of a beautiful young woman, and for years he has forced a local toy maker named Gadov Blinsky to craft dolls in her likeness. The woman is Irena Kolyana, although Isaac doesn't know her name. Now, in the campaign I run as a DM, uh, our ranger and another NPC, Rictavio, have been to Blinsky's toy shop and have seen the dolls, the Irena dolls. Uh, luckily Irena wasn't with them. They were on a date. That's a long story. We don't have a bard so the horny one is the ranger. Now in the campaign I am a, a player in which is also a Curse of Strahd campaign, albeit a very homebrewed one. Uh, our DM changed the doll to look like one of our player characters, the Vistana Bard. She also made Isaac a rather sad person, like he is an alcoholic, he's traumatized he's no sociopath because that's just you know lazy writing he is a cruel person don't get me wrong but you know there's more depth to it and the moment he saw our bard he almost almost switched sides we are rather stupid group and decided to break into the burgomaster's mansion even though it's heavily guarded which we noticed because we rolled high on perception but we're just generally stupid or reckless whatever you want to call it anyway that's one way to change the character of Isaac and make his story a bit deeper and a bit sadder if you want to invest into this kind of NPC. Moving on. Family is forever. Isaac has dreams of Irena. If he spots her, he tries to take her by force to the burgomaster's mansion. If he succeeds, he holds her captive in his bedroom. Unknown to Isaac and Irena, 
they are brother and sister. Irina fled after Isaac was attacked by the dire wolf and became lost in the woods. She wandered for days in shock until she was found and adopted by Kolyan Indirovich in the village of Barovia. Isaac covered her in an unwholesome way and won't allow anyone or anything to come between them. And this is why our DM changed Isaac's backstory to make it a bit less rapey and incesty. And having remembered this just now, I am definitely going to change this as well. Even though I have, I have already incorporated the Irina dolls. Now, oh yes, I forgot Isaac Strasny's traits. Ideal. Fear is a powerful weapon. I use it to get what I want. Bond. I am loyal to my master, Baron Valakovich, for he brought me into his home. I owe him my life, but he isn't family. Flaw. I would do anything, kill anything, to find my sister. Well, that's not really a flaw, is it? I mean, the execution is problematic, but also this doesn't make sense. I just read that he forgot about his sister. Why would he do anything to find her? Now I get why most people homebrew this. This is very inconsistent. Maybe I'm using an an older version. This is definitely not the the one that just dropped on D&D Beyond. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Apologies. Let's have a look at this stat block. Isaac Strasny is a medium humanoid with a neutral evil alignment. His armor class is a 14 due to his studded leather armor. He has 112 or 15 d8 plus 45 hit points and a walking speed of 30 feet. He has 18 points in strength with a modifier of plus 4, 15 points in dexterity with a modifier of plus 2. 16 points in constitution with a modifier of plus 3 10 points in intelligence that's a modifier of 0 only 9 points in wisdom with a modifier of minus 1 and surprisingly 15 points in charisma with a modifier of plus 2 he gains plus 8 in intimidation and plus 2 in perception. His passive perception is a 12. He speaks, writes and understands common. His challenge rating is a 5 which equals 1800 XP. Brute a melee weapon deals one extra die of its damage when Isaac hits with it, included in the attack. Actions. Multi-attack. Isaac makes two attacks with his battle axe. Battle axe. Melee weapon attack. Plus seven to hit with a reach of five feet. One target only. On a hit, it deals 2d8 plus 4 slashing damage, or 15 or 2d10 plus 4 when used with both hands. Hurl Flame Ranged Spell Attack Plus 5 to hit with a range of 60 feet, one target only. On a hit, it deals 10 or 3d6 fire damage. 
if the target is flammable, if the target is a flammable object that isn't being worn or carried, it catches fire. Okay, so much for Isaac Strasny, the Burgomaster's right hand. Let's see who is next. Kazimir Velikov. Now, as a player, me and my group have already encountered him. But since my group doesn't meet as often, the group I DM for, they are still stuck in Valaki, or rather, they have just arrived, I think it's their second day. So it's going to take them quite a while until they meet Kazimir Velikov. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't read up on him and see what my DM changed about him. Casimir, a mutilated and grief-stricken Dusk Elf, has been trapped in Barovia for centuries. His people were on the verge of being annihilated by Strahd's armies when they surrendered. Strahd left the few survivors to the mercy of the Vistani, who bore them to the Valley of Barovia, where they have lived ever since. Old Friends, Casimir's allegiance to the Vistani is so strong that he adopted the name of the Vistana who welcomed him into his clan. A man named Velikov. Although Velikov passed away more than a century ago, Casimir continues to live among Velikov's descendants. Unfortunately, in his view, these modern Vistani are neither as noble nor as enlightened as their forebears. Not one to press the issue, Casimir hopes to outlive the present leadership and see a return to the old ways. Dreams of the Damned Casimir's sister, Patrina Velikovna, is sealed in the catacombs below Castle Ravenloft. Convinced that she was a concubine of the devil Strat, Casimir and his fellow Dusk Elf stoned Patrina to death. As punishment for her depriving him of his bride, Strat butchered all the women in the Dusk Elf tribe and Casimir's ears were cut off to punish him for instigating the stoning. He wears a cowl to conceal his mutilation. Casimir's feeling of loss is tinged with simmering rage. Patrina now speaks to her brother in dreams, telling him how years of guilt and regret have dispelled all evil thoughts from her mind and cleansed her tortured soul. But Casimir remains unconvinced by her assertions, because he knows that Strahd has corrupted Patrina and led her down a path of evil and deceit. For that reason, Casimir wants to see the vampire destroyed so that his sister can be rescued from her eternal damnation. Secrets of the Ember Temple Patrina has told Casimir that the Ember Temple, an ancient vault hidden in the Borovian Mountains, is where Strahd forged his pact with evil powers and discovered how to become a vampire. Casimir has been spying on the temple for years, but he needs adventurers to help him survive the perils. He thinks that the secret to breaking Strahd's pact and freeing Borovia from its curse might be hidden there. But more important, he believes that the Ember Temple holds the secret to bringing the ancient dead back to life. With a character's help, Kazim Kazimir thinks he might be able to find out how to restore Patrina to flesh and blood, 
whereupon he can travel to Castle Ravenloft and end his sister's torment. Casimir has no inkling that Petrina is using him for exactly that purpose, and that her ultimate goal is to become as powerful a vampire as Strahd. Statistics. Use the mage stat block in the monster manual with the following adjustments. Casimir's alignment is neutral. Casimir's dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. Casimir has the Fey ancestry feature, which means he has advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put him to sleep. Because he's an Kazimi wears a ring of warmth and carries a spell book. Kazimir Velikov's traits. Ideal. I failed my people and my sister and now I must atone or be damned. Bond. I seek to return my long dead sister Patrina to life, even at the cost of my own life. Flaw, I believe my sister can be redeemed. This is interesting. Our group uh, has already encountered Casimir during a party in the Vistani camp near Valaki, where my dwarven fighter got really high and nearly had a threesome but I, I rolled badly and she was too high to act on it anyway the, the whole group is horny on main except for one character um, we nearly went to the temple and I assumed Casimir was talking about the Ember Temple, but you know, if you are a player in a campaign and a DM at the same time, sometimes, or rather all of the time you have to play dumb. So I tried my hardest not to tell my fellow players that going to that temple at that level is a very bad idea because the Ember Temple is so dangerous. In fact, the Ember Temple is so dangerous that I have excluded the whole area from um, the campaign I'm DMing because I don't want my players to die. It's their first time playing D&D &D and they don't know how they, well, they don't really know how to play their characters and their classes. They would just die out of ignorance. So I excluded the Ember Temple from my campaign, but our DM didn't. And we nearly went there and I was so scared because we are stupid. We do stupid shit. We see a lever and we pull it because why not? We hear a noise in the woods and we follow the noise and are nearly killed by a giant pack of werewolves. Stuff like that. But fortunately, I don't even know why we decided to go to Yeaster Hill first where we also almost died. Anyway, the temple is still on the table uh, and I kind of want to see it go there, but the Ember Temple is the reason I made a backup character, which I might introduce to you in a different video. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Let's build a new character together. Hmm, that's going on the list. A 
Anyway, I am so off topic and I think this is a nice moment to stop for today. I have a lot to think about how to make changes to Isaac. I have to find a couple of maps for the city of Balaki. I have to remember all loose threads, uh, every plot hooks I need to embed in Valaki. So my brain is already set on this and I don't think continuing with another NPC is a good idea right now. But I will bring you along if I continue the NPC part of the Curse of Strahd module. Until then, have a great day or a good night.